What's up, guys? How are you? Welcome into a Sunday morning episode of the Daily Juice Podcast with me, Matt Peralt. Each and every morning, we are here on the Betting Pros YouTube channel and wherever you guys get your audio podcasts. If you have someone that might like this podcast, send them this podcast. Get them to be a part of our fun little community here for the Daily Juice. My name is Matt Peralt. You guys can follow me on Twitter at Sports Talk Matt. And this podcast is being brought to you by BetMGM each and every morning. We tell you guys if you need a new account at BetMGM, great way to get one. First bet offer, $1,000 first bet offer for new users only at BetMGM.com when you use that promo code JUICE at BetMGM.com. All right, so last night, yesterday was sort of a wonky, weird day. And one of the things about the Discord channel, which is a lot of fun, is that we get to talk about plays and live wagers and ways of playing off that Miami game. It was five and a half. I didn't do a great job with that. I ended up down. I think I went one in. No, I went two and three on all my bets in that game. So I ended up lost a little bit on that. Officially we went one and two, but I told you last night that it was going to be, I was going to put five and a half down simply to play off of it. I just never got the right. I wanted Miami to get off to a good start and then we could play off of it. Cause I thought UConn was going to win because that UConn San Diego state money line parlay came in that hit that made up for the first half loss to the under because that game flew over both for the game and the first half, just like we all thought, right? <laughs> game goes way over. I had a live bit on the Red Sox and that crazy come from behind victory that they had against the Orioles. That was a small little flyer bet that I was laughing at. It was seven to five. And I was like, what the heck? Let's bet the Red Sox. See what happens somehow. If you missed the end of that game, go back and watch the end of that game. Uh, some of you guys did bet and hit the Padres Dodgers parlay we talked about yesterday. I did not bet that. So, but some of you guys did bet that. That was cool to see that to come in. And I had some other things that came in. But I think overall on the day, I wound up being just slightly down, but officially one and two on the day. And hopefully you guys are enjoying what we're doing here because that's part of the thing about the record, right? Is that I'm going to recommend plays all the time. I've got a Hail Mary parlay to give you guys. I've got some other things you can look at, other games you can monitor. But some of you are writing to me on the Discord channel. And by the way, if you're not in there, like, come on, get in the Discord channel. It's a great place to be. Talk to fellow gamblers, see what we're betting, see what we're playing, bettingpros.com slash chat or a link underneath me on YouTube. We talked a lot about live wagering and a bunch of you were like, hey, I'm starting to figure out this live betting thing. And it really is true, in particular for the NBA. I have an NBA bet to give you guys here in just one second. I have an NHL parlay to give you. I've got a baseball bet that I'm going to give you, but I've got two totals to talk about and to give you. And if you're wrong or if you want a chance to middle it or how you want or everyone want to play it, live wagering gives you that, that opportunity if you have a pregame bet already on it. So, and I know life gets in the way, you're busy and you can't always do that, but if you can and if you have a chance to watch the games, live betting is just a huge weapon in your arsenal to use and the algorithms are all wonky. <laughs> They're just all over the place. They can be completely off if you're watching the game and having a feel for how the game is going to be called or how the game's going to go. So just a heads up for that. But before I give you guys the bets for today, and again, I'll be in the Discord channel later on today with two NBA player props. So if you're not in there and you like betting the NBA player props, I'll have two more for you guys coming up here today. Bettingpros.com slash chat is the invitation. It's free, simple, and easy, or that direct link on the YouTube channel underneath the video down below me. I said it again, underneath me. <laughs> yep, there we go. Cut that for you. But you guys can do that. If you were wondering who won for the month of March, we do not know as of yet. If you guys are watching on YouTube, you see a fun little graphic pop up on your screen for the one-year free premium upgrade for one of you. I will tell you who won for March later. April giveaway coming up. How do you win the one year? Well, you subscribe to this Betting Pros YouTube channel. You like this video and then comment on this video underneath because when you do, you could be that lucky winner who gets the free upgrade to Betting Pros Premium. Whether you're looking for access to exclusive player picks, top rated player props, or custom analysis of your betting performance, Betting Pros Premium has tools to help you catch more bets, plain and simple. If you don't want to wait for the giveaway, however, you can sign up today at bettingpros.com slash upgrade and start betting smarter, not harder. Okay, I mentioned the two NBA player props. 
I'm going to start with the NBA today because it's arguably the game of the day. The Philadelphia 76ers are taking on the Milwaukee Bucks, who just got their tails handed to them by the Boston Celtics. Now, the Philadelphia 76ers are looking like they're going to have both Harden and Embiid in this game. Okay? If they don't, if one of them sits or if Giannis sits, I you got to punt out of this bet, okay? And maybe you do it in-game, however you can do it. But this bet is being made under the assumption that both rosters are complete, okay? This may be the last time these two teams play before the playoffs, so it is the last time they play, but they, won't see each other, they may not see each other in the playoffs. But I am extremely interested of watching what's happening with Milwaukee because defensively, they are an absolute mess. Gave up 140 points to the Celtics, Gave up 136 points to Indiana. Gave up 117 points to Detroit and 129 points to Denver. Now, the first game between the Sixers and the Bucks went way under, but that was back literally the first game of the season. It was 90 to 88, went under by 46 points. Then they matched up in November and the game went over, barely, but it went over by a half point. It was 211. Uh, 212 got scored. The most latest game, however, between these two teams was a score fest. 232 and a half, 133, 130 was the final score. It went over by 30 and a half points between these two teams. Now, Toronto was the last opponent for the 76ers. That went over by four points. 117, 110. Total was 223 there. The last road game against Denver was 227. It pushed the game before that against the Phoenix Suns. It was 225. It went over by five points. But three of the last four have gone over for Milwaukee, and I think Milwaukee has a good chance of winning this game. My fear is that the number is four and a half at DraftKings. It's five in Vegas, and it's over a possession. And I just feel like this is a one possession game. It's the number is giving me pause. I think Milwaukee wins because they're going to be ferociously mad. Okay. The Sixers snapped the buck 16 game winning streak. The last time that they played. And I think this is going to be played like a playoff game. I, I think this is going to be in a really, really fun game to watch high scoring two thirty three and a half is the total. We're going to bet the over here of two thirty three and a half. And I think we have a good shot at seeing this game fly. You may get a really fast start, and if you get a fast start, okay, this is how I bet in-game when it comes to totals. So we're on the over, right? Fast start in the first quarter. Say we get 65 points scored in the first quarter, okay? The live algorithm over-adjusts, puts this thing at like 245, 248, somewhere in that range. I want more than a 10-point middle, all right? Then I'll come back and I'll bet the under, all right? Then all I can do is I'm just going to lose the juice, all right? You can keep adding if you want, but that's how I'm going to play this, okay? I'm going to take an over position at 233.5 pregame for 1.1 units, hope for a fast start. We didn't, we didn't know. It doesn't always work out, okay? It didn't work out for the Miami game. I tried this. It didn't work out, right? I wanted to see Miami get off to a big start, have UConn be plus five, plus four, and take UConn and be on plus plus, right? Never happened. UConn never trailed. They annihilated Miami, okay? So this game starts off dead slow, and it's like a 40-point first quarter. We're in trouble, okay? And there's not a lot you can do. You can start betting over again, but then you lose both bets potentially. So just understand that it's not a magic formula. It's just what I'm hoping is going to happen because Milwaukee played so poorly in their last game, and they're 27-6 and six straight up. And here comes Embiid, here comes Harden, here comes a lot of attention. It's a night game in Milwaukee. Big, big matchup between these two teams. And so, to me, I'm expecting a much better performance out of the Milwaukee Bucks. I'm expecting a much better performance just out of their offense, but their defense is a problem. So, again, I am pretty confident we're getting both Embiid and Harden. They played in the last game, and I'm very confident we're getting Giannis. Over 233.5 for 1.1 units. Sixers in the Bucks here today. Milwaukee now, sorry, 30 and 8. I was looking at the old number. 30 and 8 Milwaukee now at home. Sixers are 23 and 15. 
Again, first matchup was 90-88. That was an anomaly. Second matchup was 110-102 in Philly. Second, third matchup was 133-130 in Milwaukee. That game happened, uh, what, a month ago, basically, on the 4th of March. First bet over 233.5 for Milwaukee and Philadelphia. Two NBA player props, at least one coming from this game because I think it's going to be really high scoring, so good chance of getting some player props to hit coming up. All right? Sunday night baseball, Phillies and the Rangers. Now, it's really early in the year, and I've talked about the fact that I didn't want to be involved in totals early in the year. Said it yesterday, but the Phillies and the Rangers have played two games so far, and the Phillies have used seven pitchers in both games. They're already burning through bullpen arms, and the the Rangers are already seeing these pitchers. Now, I think the Phillies could win this game. It's tough to sweep somebody. Like, I I almost bet there's a Hail Mary parlay I'll tell you about. Like, the Braves run line today against the Nationals is a good bet, okay? I I don't mind it at all. I just get worried about, one, Sundays being wonky, and two, it's the third game of a three-game series for many of these teams. And it's hard to sweep anybody in baseball, okay? Nationals could be live today, okay? La- Nationals on the re- on their on their run line plus one and a half runs may be a good bet, okay? To come in and bet that, but I think the Braves are going to win. But Braves money line, Braves run line. I think it's decent. Braves have won, I think, fifteen of eighteen. But anyways, back to the Rangers. The total is eight and a half. It's minus one twenty, okay? Bailey Falter is going against Martin Perez. Martin Perez is a left-handed pitcher who has done pretty well against the Phillies, actually. But this Phillies lineup, look, they're going to score. This is a 5-4, 6-5 baseball game to me. I don't think anybody goes crazy. The Phillies have given up 11 in 16 runs in the first two games so far of this series. I don't think they're going to give up double digits again. But if they do, I mean, the Rangers will get to the over themselves at 8.5. But... 16-3, 11-7. 16 to 3, 11 to 7. So we have 18 and 19 runs have been scored. Does that mean that we're going to see that many runs again? No. But it's Sunday night baseball. And clearly, this ballpark right now, with these two teams playing, they're hot. Both offenses are hot out of the gate. Rangers offense looks tremendous. A uh, little maybe overrated, but coming out of the gate against a left handed pitcher in Bailey Falter. I think it's hard to look at this Rangers team and be like, yeah, they're not going to score four or five runs tonight. I mean, just given the way they're playing and given the way this bullpen's been used, they're going to get after the bullpen. Even if the starting pitcher goes well, I mean, even if, you know, Bailey Falter is pretty pretty good, he goes five innings, okay? How many innings is he going to go? Five? Then the bullpen comes in. They've seen these guys already. The Rangers are going to go to work, okay? It's prime time. Bright lights for the Rangers, not typical here. They're 2-0 and at home. Phillies are 0-2. I told you before, I'm going to fade the Phillies out of the gate here with the Hoskins injury and the fact that they're not going to get Harper back to later on this summer. They're 0-2 to start. I think there's a good chance they go 0-3. But even if the Phillies go off offensively, that's a great thing for the over, okay? I'm going to bet the over. Over 8.5 on Sunday Night Baseball, Phillies and the Rangers, 1.2 units down. DraftKings has that at minus 120 here for that. Let's see another seven pitchers for the Phillies or we'll get run out there and the Rangers put up a bunch of runs here again. Stolen bases are back in a big way. Offenses are back in a big way. We saw nine, we saw what, 13 runs being scored yesterday uh, for the for the Guardians and the Mariners. We saw f- uh, nine runs being scored. M- Miami Marlins beat the Mets, which was tremendous. And, and, and those teams are going again today. I would love it if the Miami Marlins could take that series and win today against the Mets and start off two and one. That would be phenomenal if that were to happen. But I have the Braves in a run line parlay that is a plus 500 parlay, plus 505. So let, let's go to it here for just one second. The Penguins and the Bruins are both playing after playing yesterday. They're both on a back-to-back. They're both going to win today, okay? This is a plus-123 parlay. The Penguins are playing the Flyers. The Penguins have won both games against the Flyers this year. They've scored five and six goals and given up one goal each time. This is now a must-win game. 
for the Penguins. After losing to, to the Bruins, where that game was an unbelievable hockey game, an insane score by Pasta, hat trick by Pasta. What a win for the Bruins. That cashed it for us, but that was so fun. That was the most fun game of the day watching. But from a standings perspective, the Pittsburgh Penguins cannot afford to lose against bad teams. Like they must win games like this against the Flyers. The Flyers are almost mathematically eliminated. Uh, oh, they are. No, okay, now they are. As after tonight, the Flyers have been mathematically eliminated. Happened today, so the Flyers are done. Mathematically eliminated from being a playoff team. The Penguins are one point behind the Florida Panthers. They are right there. They cannot afford to lose any more games against bad teams. Penguins money line. They're at home on top of that. The Boston Bruins did something that was a little bit weird. Jim Montgomery says they want the record. That they've come this far. They're three wins away from the record. They want the record. They want the record. And if they can do it for the most wins, they probably won't get the most points of unless they really want to get after it. But this game's on TNT nationally televised game against the St. Louis Blues. The St. Louis Blues are a mess. I mean, we've talked about this a lot, but they're 16, 16, and 5 at home. And the Blues, I mean, they've been playing. I guess I, I guess that's, that's not true. They've won 4 or 5, so they're not a mess. But the over in this game very well might be a good bet too. I mean, Bruins, Blues, over. 3-1 to one was the first game for the Bruins. Five three six five seven six six three four three for the Blues. Every game over over the last five. The Bruins though two one two one four three two one four two or and then today because um, the Blues got killed today, right? That's why I was thinking that they, they were a mess. Yeah, they got killed by Nashville six to one today on the road, and then and then to turn around, and come back home, and take on the Bruins. Bruins want to win. They, they want this sixty three wins. All right. They are three wins away from tying it, four wins away from breaking it, and they can do it if they run through this part of the schedule. The Penguins are supposed to be that one team that might bite them, but they've got St. Louis, Toronto, and New Jersey the next three games. They'll probably drop one of those games, maybe at home to Toronto, but they play on the road to St. Louis. They win that. They could wrap it up on April the 8th in the final three games against Philadelphia, Washington, and Montreal. You can just start resting people for the playoffs. Okay, Bruins, Penguins, Moneyline Parlay. I, 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 I've been burdened on these before, but I just think St. Louis is almost eliminated. They're not there yet, but they're almost eliminated. They're teetering on that line where, where they'll be eliminated probably, let's see, in the stand, they're what, 10 games, 10 points behind that last wild card spot at the moment. After that loss yesterday, so St. Louis on the year, they are now uh, 76 points. So Vancouver's got 75. The Arizona Coyotes have 67. They've been eliminated, but they've got Nashville with 84, the Flames with 85, who are not in the playoffs, who are right there, and then Winnipeg and the Kraken, who are in those wild card spots. I mean, my gosh, they're, what, 11 points out of a playoff spot? I mean, they're pretty much dead, and they know that they're dead. So they're not making the postseason. The Bruins are playing for something. They're putting their minds to, I like what Montgomery's doing. Say, hey, you know what? We're still going to play hard, guys. We came this far. Let's go get it. Bruins money line. Penguins money line for a plus 123 parlay. Now, Calgary's playing the Anaheim Ducks. Calgary's going to kill the Anaheim Ducks. <laughs> okay? The Anaheim Ducks, I think I, I was confusing Anaheim with St. Louis. Anaheim is completely and totally given up. I mean, like, Amazingly given up. The puck line's minus 175. It's so bad. It probably was, it's probably going to go to two and a half. That's what it was uh, today, tonight against the uh, against the Oilers. It was two and a half, and the Oilers. The final score of that game was six nothing. So they hit the two and a half. The the Ducks have lost. Uh, let's see how many games in a row. They have lost one, two, three, four, five, six, seven games in a row, and nine of ten. They're one in nine over their last 10 games. Okay. Six nothing, four one, five one, six three, three two, five one, two one. So the last four losses all in the puck line. Calgary puck line minus 175. Braves run line against the Nationals, who they've been killing. 
And then the Penguins on the puck line. It's a plus 505 parlay if you want it. I think the Penguins are going to kill the Flyers. Very good chance the Braves are going to kill the Nationals. And Calgary is going to kill the Ducks. I mean, you're betting heavy chalk, but at this point in the season, I'm more concerned about the Braves more than anything. So maybe you just do Braves money line. If you flip that to Braves money line, let's see what that would be. Um, or if you just play Calgary in the Penguins, a two-legger is still plus 230. That's a good bet. I'll probably make that bet. I'll probably take away the baseball and just do Calgary puck line, Penguins puck line. That's plus 230. That's a good play to make. I think Calgary's going to kill the Ducks. I think the Penguins are going to kill the Flyers. There you go. That's a pretty good parlay, a plus 230. Not officially, obviously, but that's that's a good parlay. All right? So just some options as to what else was I going to give you guys. Uh, I think that's it, right? Yeah, I think I think that was that was the only baseball plays. Yeah, that's it. Okay, for today. So, two NBA player props coming up here in the Discord channel later today. We're going Bucks in the Sixers over 233 and a half, 1.1 units. Over eight and a half runs, Rangers in the Phillies on Sunday night baseball at minus 120 at DK. Penguins Bruins money line parlay at plus 123 for one unit. That's one that's 3.3 units in play plus a half a unit or more around a bit for the parlays for the uh, NBA player props. Bettingpros.com slash chat is how you get in to see the player props. And by the way, somebody said, hey, Matt, will you post the player props quicker? No. Just so you guys understand, no. I'm going to post the player props within one to two hours from the start of the game. Why? I want to make sure everyone's playing, okay? I'm not going to put a prop up if there's a major player out and everything gets screwed up, all right? So they're closer to start. And you can say, well, the you know, Matt, the prop bet gets bet. The, the number changes. I understand all of that, okay? But at this point in the season, rest, guy sitting, changes prop bets in a big way. So no, I'm not going to put the prop bets quicker or up sooner. I'll put them up one to two hours from tip, just FYI. My name is Matt Peralta. Follow me on Twitter at Sports Talk Matt each and every morning. It is the Daily Juice Podcast being brought to you by BetMGM.